In this video, I show how you can connect two OLED displays to a single SPI bus on a Raspberry Pi Pico. The OLED displays are great for use in hobby electronics projects due to being easy to read even when the text is very small. OLED stands for Organic Light Emitting Diode. This needs a controller to interface with the computer or microcontroller and a common IC is the SSD1306. The display is normally provided mounted to a printed circuit board with the SSD1306 IC included on the board. The SSD1306 can be used with two different interfaces, either SPI, sometimes known as SPI, or I2C, sometimes known as I2C. In this example, I'm using the SPI version. A common way of telling the difference is the number of pins. The I2C version often has just four pins, whereas the SPI version has seven. An immediate thought may be that with much less pins needed, the I2C would be much better. But that's not necessarily the case. One of the disadvantages of the I2C version is that it has a fixed I2C address, which means you can only connect one to an individual I2C bus. There are some ways around this, and you can have up to two I2C buses on a Raspberry Pi Pico, but instead I decided to use SPI, which could allow more displays. First, a quick introduction to SPI. I won't cover this in detail as I've already covered it in my other videos. See the link in the description. I'm using alternative terminology but keeping the same acronyms. Again, for a further explanation, see my other videos. Here I've shown one main device, which is the device that is controlling the SPI bus, typically a computer or a microcontroller. Then this shows three secondary devices which are connected to the bus. These can be output devices like displays or sensors giving information to the microcontroller. These share a common clock known as the SPI clock, SCLK, a main out secondary in, MOSI or MOSI, and a main in secondary out, MISO, MISO. Then each device is selected using the secondary select or chip select pin, referred to as SS or CS. Using this, you need three pins for the bus and then one additional pin for each secondary device that is connected to that bus. But that was the theory. In reality, the SSD1306 is a bit different. First, as a display, it doesn't need to send anything back to the main controller, so it doesn't need the MISO pin. But then it needs two additional pins, one labelled DC, which determines whether signals from the main device should be interpreted as control signals or data, and then a reset pin labelled RST. In reality, the reset pin isn't really needed, as the only time I see it being used is during initialization. However, it does need to be allocated a pin for the library to work. You can just allocate one GPIO pin for this. More details are on my website, but for this demonstration, I will be using a reset pin for each display. This table shows the different pins I used on the Raspberry Pi Pico, and these are the GPIO references, and how they relate to the labels on the displays the variable name used in the software code, and a comment to describe what they're used for. So here's some code which I've created in MicroPython. To try this out, you'll first have to upload the library module ssd1306.py to the Raspberry Pi Pico. Details of where to get this are included in my webpage. See the description. And then you can copy the code from my website into Thony, as shown here, the first part of the code is a list of port allocations and then it creates the SPI interface here. It does print out a bit of detail about the SPI but that's just for debugging purposes. Next, the code creates the two OLED objects using the SPI bus and the other port details. So here we have the SPI object we created before, and these are the pins. Finally, it's a case of adding the text using the X and Y positions and calling the show method to upload it to the display. And that should allow you to send a different message to each display. You may notice that I have two different displays. The one on the left is yellow and blue, and the one on the right is white. This is how the display is physically made. 
you can't change the colors through the code, for instance, but you can buy some displays of different colors. For multicolor displays, then typically the first line of text will be in one color, allowing you to show a title, and then the rest of the text will be in a different color. I'm going to leave it there for now, and this will be incorporated into a future project. So if you'd like to see that, please subscribe and click on the notification icon, and then you'll get notified about the future videos. Please give this video a like as well to help share it with others. Thanks for watching, I look forward to seeing you on a future video.